let's just talk about it. You know, it's been years since you've been Wimbledon's going on. Do you miss being a being on tour? Not really, actually. Um, I guess when you have you know a career of five years, ten years, fifteen years, then one feels like probably feels like there's not enough being done. But having had a thirty-one year career, I feel really blessed to have kind of squeezed out every single bit of passion, emotional, physical, mental uh, uh, ability to give to this profession. I think that playing an individual sport uh, takes a mammoth amount of mental and emotional courage uh, because you don't have four other mates or 10 other mates or 20 other mates traveling with you. Also, when you're uh, coming from a country like India, where tennis was not really something that people did for a profession, you know, where you didn't have many tennis players who travel the world, uh, you know, for 48, 49 weeks a year. I feel that uh, growing up in the 80s in India, playing tennis as much as you had Vijay Amitraj to look up to, or Ramesh Krishnan to look up to, or even a Ramanathan sir and a Naresh Kumar to look up through, I think in those two gentlemen's uh, era, it was more of a of a, 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 a profession that maybe one or two Indians were on tour. Mm. You know, I, I feel like when I started playing, uh, and Ayaz will go back to, you know, the 1986s when I left Calcutta to join the Amritraj Academy or 1990 when I won Wimbledon for the first time, um, there were no Indians on tour. So it was such a lonely profession, especially for a shy young boy from Calcutta who loved playing football, who loved playing hockey, who loved playing team sport. I gave up all my passion for those team sports to emulate my father. You know, today I'll sit in front of a showcase uh, of trophies. But back in, you know, when I was seven, eight, nine years old, I didn't have any idea of what these trophies were for me. I would be polishing my dad's Olympic medal. I'd be polishing my mom's trophies and asking them about the goddess of Athena at the Olympics. And why do the Olympic rings have five rings, which should stand for the five continents? Or why do they have different colors? What is the movement of the Olympics? Mm. And then I guess, Riyadh, I had parents who took the time to explain to me and not ridicule my questions, but they explained to me about how the Olympics stands for community. It stands for help. It stands for competition. It stands for all these good things that today in society might be a premium, uh, which I don't think I've been a very talented tennis player my whole life. I just think that I'm, you know, got other attributes like athleticism, being a student of my craft. I can take the, my threshold of pain is very, very high. So I can train for much longer hours than most others can. And I think that's why I was successful. But really to come back to it, I, I don't miss the travel at all because I've squeezed every last drop of sweat and blood out of yeah. my body and mind for tennis and for playing for the country. Yeah, you mentioned, you mean, I asked Kamal many wants to, but Liana, you yeah. men mentioned about the legacy, right? You mentioned, and you also said that one probable thing was there's only Vijay Amitraj and Bosa and Ramesh Krishnan, you know, before you. So you know, it was a new sport in India, so to speak, compared to your cricket and all that. But, you know, then there was you, there was Bhupati, there was, you know, Bopana who's still playing, and there was Sanya Mirza. You know, you had a plethora of people. But today, right now, is back to zero. Why is that? In your view, why is that? Because you built up tennis. tennis. You guys got tennis <laughs> into the in India, and now it's back to zilch. Nothing at all. I think it's kind of come back full circle quite a bit. Um, when I started out, uh, Ramesh was in his last couple of years of his career. Vijay had already retired. Um, Ramanathan, sir, had left a legacy of getting to the semifinals of Wimbledon twice. Uh, Naresh Kumar was my captain at that time in Davis Cup. But these were people that one read about, one saw pictures of them, one, one, one heard about their stories. But whenever I was too young to actually have um, grown up watching them. And plus, I wasn't into tennis at that time. I was more into football. And, you know, I, I feel like um, growing up with a Bengali mother and a Portuguese go and dad, uh, football was always my passion. So the likes of Pele, the likes of Maradona, the likes of, 
you know socrates and uh, and and, and uh, romario and those guys uh, always uh, the likes of beckenbauer the the likes of my favorite philosopher of life uh, johann cruyff um those stories kind of enlightened me so my whole life i've i've always tried to be a student of life i've always tried to learn from great achievers and i could pick like a, a, a mother teresa who was in the same city that i was born and brought up in her sense of empathy and compassion and humanity or uh, or nelson mandela who i played for his children's fund for many many years in south africa his sense of uh, freedom of mind or or bringing community together and equality um obviously playing a sport like tennis which was uh one of the only sports in the world that had equal rights equal opportunity equal prize money uh, for both male and female athletes i believe in a lot of that so hence growing up reading and learning and and educating myself of johan cruyff you know total football style mm-hmm. and to me that was an analogy for life of how uh, you know you not only master your craft in where you're playing but also one position in the defense and one position in the offense so that you know what the defense is going to pass to you and when you get the ball what are you going to do to pass to the offense so i think that's almost a metaphor for life and when you ask me today i i think we miss a lot of character in yeah. in tennis in in india we miss a lot of of uh, individual character in tennis in india and uh, i have so much respect for all the youngsters who are out there trying to to make a living and traveling with the expense of tennis with the equipment of tennis with 99% of our tournaments are outside india very yeah. different as ayas would tell you to cricket very different as ayas would tell you to football where all to badminton where most of the tournaments are in india most of the cricket is played in india or but played within you- seven countries but in <laughs> tennis you go from auckland new zealand to machu picchu and yeah. you have competition from everywhere and you you actually look at that competition that comes at you globally uh in tennis and it is insane you got elena svitolina from ukraine whose country is in war at the moment yeah. with russia no other than russia her grandparents are still there her her her, her, her sibling still there but yet at the same time she not only became a mother in october with gail monfils started practicing tennis in january got to the french open and did really well there but in the semi finals of wimbledon yeah i mean these are character stories these are people that ayas will talk, tell you more than i will tell you about uh, this is what sport is about it's about character is is there something that you feel which is lacking in us socio culturally in terms of sports are we have are we doing enough now maybe 30 40 years back when you were young you come from a in that sense a privileged family background because they were both into sports but a lot right. of people don't and the other is from an administrative point of view from the you know structural point of view from federations from coaches coaches at the grassroots level is there something seriously missing there which is you know which is kind of limiting us in india from producing the number of champions say that east europe produces or you know even a very fractured you know russia so to speak in many ways champ as usual your one sentence gives me a canvas of discussions that would probably take us a month to do to <laughs> delve into but to, to try and put it into a nutshell the key word there is grassroots yeah i really feel that when we look at our indian community we are a cerebral community mm. some of the best doctors some of the best businessmen as much as in india we come from a cerebral community we're number one in the world in obesity we're number one in the world in diabetes <laughs> mental health issues are taboo still today mm. post covid especially what are we doing about mental health issues stresses that people feel just pure quality of life so in that i feel like as much as a tennis ball or a cricket bat or a football or a badminton shuttle there is not understand religion caste dialect language which region you're from sport unites people mm-hmm. but yet i would say 85% of our talent in any walk of life in india is untapped why because it's in the rural areas yeah 
when we look at our major cities like bombay delhi calcutta bangalore hyderabad chennai in ed- in the education schools of of all these major cities what playgrounds do we have mm. back in the day when we were doing pt physical training what were we doing 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 <laughs> yaar olympic medal kaisa jeetenge iske sath yeah where is the eye hand coordination where is the eye feet coordination where is the mental game that we talk about mental toughness thank you ji where is the ability to teach our young children through sport as a vehicle a quality of life leadership camaraderie fellowship uh, how to listen before we speak aajkal everyone just wants to talk everyone wants to give advice look what we are doing here we are also talking but my point is when we are dealing with young talent when we are dealing with young <clears throat> kids and 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 nurturing kids in sport ayas we are only talking about the cream of the crop Yeah. We're only really talking about the Sachin Tendulkar, the MS Dhonis, the Virat Kohlis. We're only really talking about the Saina Nehwals and PV Sindhu. We're only talking about the Leander Mahesh Sanya. We're only really talking about the cream of the crop. Yeah, you know the Neera Chopras. Where is the grassroots level mm-hmm. in your educate in our education system in India? Where are we talking about diet? Where are we talking about fluid intake? Where are we talking about mental health issues? where are we talking about cultural issues where are we giving opportunity and when i say where are we talking about it means yes the associations can do a lot yes the governing bodies can do a lot but i think that it also comes with generations of incorporating into the daily lifestyle of children good health through sport yeah right i feel That's- that when you look at when you look at the bcci most other non cricket athletes always say cricket takes everything cricket takes sponsorship cricket takes tv time cricket takes... i've always believed in my career and i as will speak of this very clearly let us learn from bcci let us learn from cricket let us learn from the people that are doing it right yeah. bcci is one organization on the world that are plowing in approximately 200 crores into other non cricketing sports and 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 uh, uh entrepreneur or 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 csr uh, 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 yes. funding shall we call it right i think that when you look at the ipl when you look at cricket when you look at the governing body of cricket they do such a wonderful job to bring that past athletes back into not just commentary not just writing but also into umpiring also into governorship also into designing different forms of leagues when they look at the youth the number of cricket clubs that you have in bombay alone i'm not even talking maharashtra the number of cricket clubs you have in bombay alone let me rephrase that the number of cricket clubs that you have in matunga alone <laughs> will be more than tennis academies you have in the whole country correct ayas yes absolutely so i feel that when you look at sport as a whole and i'm talking from the olympic perspective yes. that having played seven olympics you know in a row which is the world record I study the Olympic movement around the world. I study the Australian Institute of Sport. I study the US Olympic Training Center in Colorado and hence at the NCAA level the National Collegiate Athletic Association level their blueprints are that in every college in the country of America North America equal scholarship to girls as for boys. That means if one college like say let's take one of the famous ones UCLA hmm. right at UCLA if they have a great american football team that's 133 scholarships to the boys free education to all the kids boys that means in that same university they have to have women's sport that also gives an equivalent to 133 scholarships for the girls yeah hence their tennis team becomes strong they win the ncaa championships their soccer team what they call soccer we call football their soccer team is strong their lacrosse team is strong their swimming team is strong their track team is strong it's no wonder that out of ucla or stanford or usc three universities in california alone majority of their olympic champions come out of those universities why because they're pumping it into the grassroots level not just into when you win an olympic medal chalo i will give you a sponsorship or a scholarship or money but at the grassroots levels you're touching numbers 
Now let's yeah. get into numbers, guys. I'm just elaborating more here because I love the subject of grassroots sport and and quality health and education for all. In India, we're the number one youthful country in the world. We are the youngest population in the world, right? Sorry, my thoughts are getting ahead of me, I'm losing my English. But we're the youngest country in the world. Approximately, we have 745 million kids under the age of 26. We also have 500 million kids approximately under the age of 18. Which means 500 million kids are all in school and college doing PT, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, three times a week for 45 minutes each period. Are we choreographing those periods? Are we looking at mental health? Are we looking at leadership? Are we looking at fellowship? Are we looking at teaching them skills like eye-hand coordination, like cardiovascular coordination? Are we teaching them <clears throat> the ability to communicate with different uh, children from different communities? Are we giving them the opportunity to get away from their smart gadgets and just run in the fresh air in the open under the sun so that they get their, their, their vitamin Ds, that they get their dopamine, that they get their uh, endorphins? Yes. Baba has spent 60 years, not yeah. just winning an Olympic medal, but also in sports science and sports education. He's got 25 million kids under, under his training in Southeast Asia. Yeah. For me, my 40 years now of my knowledge, my dream I ask today is in the next four years to touch 250 million kids through sports education, to getting out and, and, and scouting talent, nurturing talent, helping them all become champions in different walks of life. How, how it's not just about, the uh, fantastic. How are, you, how are you going to go about that? How are you going to go about that? Yeah. We'd we'll love to hear about it. That, that is a conversation at another time. No. But I'm very, uh, I'm very private and very understated. I, I like to do things under the radar peacefully. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I like to do it with a lot of inclusion of everybody because I think the cake yeah. is big enough for everybody to eat. Correct. But as far as I'm concerned, my new Wimbledon after I finished winning my six titles, is to have a much healthier community of Indians around the world, it's to have a much healthier race. Mental fitness, emotional fitness, physical fitness, these are three topics. I'm not just talking tennis, which is niche. I'm not just talking badminton or cricket or hockey or football, which is the base sports in our country. I'm talking physical fitness, mental fitness, emotional fitness. That is how we, over two generations, now, if you say approximately each generation is eight years in the next 16 years, having these 250 million, having 300 million, starting with those numbers and then building out. I would love to eradicate diabetes in our country using sport and, and knowledge. I would love to take away obesity in our community through awareness of the kinds of foods that you're eating and the timings of which you're eating those foods. Fantastic. It's I must all at the you. grassroots level. To explain to Riyaz, I'm sorry, just to interject. So Riyaz, you know, this is something that uh, he's been, actually even since his playing days, he's been talking about this. And a couple of times right. I remember, we've had conversations about how to use sport, not just sport as a metaphor for leadership talks and stuff like that. Right, right. right. But working from grassroots level upwards. I yeah. remember one particular chat I think we had, I was flying back from Calcutta after a cricket match and he happened to be on the same flight and we sat together. So we had a couple of hours together and pretty much, I mean, he's got a little more details now because he's got maybe maybe given a little more mind space. But, you know, so Lee, what uh, have you, I mean, th what you're saying actually works out, you know, to bring out a white paper on how to revolutionize not just sport in India, the whole grassroots to upwards pyramid model, but all that is encompassed in that, you know. It's also about eradication of um, or improving health improving camaraderie, improving, improving community or community feelings or, you know, Correct. synthesization, synthesization, whatever you want to call it, all kinds of terms one can Correct. use. But it's a very massive, you know, the, the, the mother idea is so strong and so powerful, but so large. So Powerful, large and refreshing. More than anything, refreshing. Yeah. It's like, you know, Thank like you really for the support, guys. You know, and... Someone who can do it, someone who's got the, you know, whatever... You know, it's just him, him or her to do it. I'm glad that someone's taking that initiative. You know, but I don't know. I, I don't think I'll ever see that. I never thought I will see that in my lifetime. But hopefully there's a start here and there's something happening. 
which is good, which is good for India, and which is good for India in the long run. But good, good on you, Leander. It will be really good for India. If this, we wish you the very best. Thanks for yeah. the support, guys. And as you know, Ayaz, I have never been one to take up small challenges. If you're yes. trying to do something small, please don't call on me. But if there are big on big challenges where you can really make a difference to India, because I'm so passionate about the Tiranga, I'm so passionate about our people. Uh, and that's why I gave up football. And that's why I took up tennis, a sport that I wasn't even talented at. I mean, I wasn't even built for tennis. I mean, the mm -hmm. average height of a tennis player in the 80s was six foot one. Today, the average height of a tennis player is six foot four. Jeez, I'm 5'10 on a good day. Yeah. So I, I was always, you know, swimming up against the, the tide and up against stream. But I feel that with the 60 years of knowledge that my Baba has and the 40 years of knowledge that I have, over the last 20 years, I has, uh, just to share with you, I've been uh, capsuling all his knowledge through all the data that he has, whether it's books, whether it's files, whether it's reports, mm -hmm. whether it's that whole 25 million students that he's done through sports science, sports medicine, and sports fitness, all their report cards. And I've tried to really spend, I've got a group of people that do it with me. Obviously, I can't do it alone. So I put a team together 20 years ago, and I've basically capsuled all dad's knowledge along with my diaries and my knowledge that I have as being the guinea pig for his philosophy. Mm -hmm. And in that, um, I've taken this, his 60 years and my 40 years, 100 years of knowledge and put it together. And now I'm going state for state, getting into the grassroots, getting into rural areas, scouting talent, oh. nurturing talent, also making mistakes in that science, but then rectifying it and making the system so wonderful that through sport as a vehicle, we can empower a whole nation. Mm. I feel that when you look at countries like America, Australia, Sweden, Germany, you look at the Russia, China tried to do it in the last two decades. Um, when you actually look at these major powerhouse countries, they've all used sport as a vehicle yes. to unite the people. As you so wonderfully said, you can use so many adjectives, yeah. you can use so many uh, wonderful phrases, but really it's about empowering the youth to become champions. And for me, since we are the youngest country in the world, even the, the business behind sport yeah. is humongous. I mean, look at the Olympic movement. I mean, let's look closer to home. Let's look IPL. Yeah. What a phenomenal job they've done with it. So in that, I feel like my dream is eventually to see my kids win Wimbledon championships, my kids win world championships, our kids win uh, Olympic medals, our kids not just in the field of sport, but also go out there with a great sense of health, a great sense of mental health, a great sense of physical health. When we look at India as a whole, a lot of our great teachers have left our country. Mm. A, lot, a lot of our great uh, uh, doctors have left the country and now slowly trickling back. Yeah. You know, I feel that a lot of the world's knowledge lies with the Indian community. But a lot of them have gone to greener pastures in the 80s and the 90s and 2000s. And I feel like the next decade is India's. That's my strong belief, that the next decade is India. I, should, I think we should be the front runners and be leading by example. So as much as I could go and live in Hawaii or live in New York or live in, uh, in, in, uh, in Australia and in, in Sydney on the coast or go and live in, in Dubai or anywhere in the world I choose to live because I've got a huge fan following anywhere in the world. Right. I think that one has to lead by example is to come home and make a difference here. Yeah. And that is where my passion lies, not just in spending quality time looking after my, my, my parents who are now older, who you know have health issues that I spend quality time with them because I gave up my youth to be focused. And what's that word we all use, Ayaz in sports, sacrifice. That's right. not been a sacrifice. <laughs> it's just been dedication or passion. Yeah. You know, if you want to do something, you have to sacrifice to do it. So I don't, I, I look at sacrifice as a wonderful word, not a negative word. But not only am I back home spending great quality time on the dining table with my dad and mom and discussing how champions are built with their knowledge, but also actually doing something about it is to really get down to the grassroots and take it and shake it up and say, this is how champions are built. And, and in a way that it's done in a classy fashion. I mean, just look at my own career. I'm a product of Indian genetics and an environment that Ma and Baba set for me at home to become a champion. Yes, sure, I've had to live in locker rooms. Yes, sure, I didn't have foreign currency to pay for coaches uh, in a sport like tennis that is so difficult. Yes, sure, I didn't have an uh, international credit card to pay for a fancy hotel to stay. 
that's why I had to live in locker rooms and hitchhike rides and take trains and got a big scar on my chest when on uh, on my left side of my chest when I got mugged at Grand Central in New York. But that's what builds character. That's why when you get onto a semi-final match at Wimbledon and someone's giving me a tough tough task and fighting in that fifth set, I look him in the eye and say, "Let's go, buddy." You know, mm-hmm. yes, I come from the streets of Calcutta, but let's go. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> this, is, this is so profound, and I hope that you know. You obviously, I would imagine you set the ball rolling. The wheels, as to use another cliche, the wheels are in motion, and things will, you know, we'll hear more about the endeavor that you've talked about. But now, I've kind of, what's the biggest kick-ass advice your dad or your mom or both of them gave you when you started your career? Really, kick-ass, which has stayed with you all your life. Is that the founder of my it? dad? My dad has given me some amazing, as you call it, kick ass <laughs> advice. <laughs> <laughs> my dad is no, he's uh, he's not only my father, he's not only my North Star, he's not only my uh, my best friend, uh, he's not only my my guiding light, he is uh, he's been my hero and he's been someone I've always tried to live up to. I'm very emotional about him, and uh, his Parkinson's is not doing good at the moment, but. Um, he uh, has always led by example, and uh, apart from being the first man at the at the end of a tennis court when I lose a match, or the last man to come come to me when I win a match, mm. um, my father always taught me about empathy, always taught me about compassion, always taught me about respecting every human being, right from a auto driver to a darwan to the guy who puts on the lights at the stadium for you right up to the king and queen. And dad's famous line was, if you can sit with a pauper or a king and eat with them all the same, Mm. you would have done something in life. And that was something that I've always kind of cherished. Um, Mr. Mandela uh, said to me once um, at Robben Island in cell number five, when I was playing for the Mandela Children's Fund and, and trying to raise money for the kids in, in South Africa. Um, Andre Agassi was there, Steffi Graf was there, Arantxa Sanchez, Wayne Ferreira, the South African champion, and Amanda Coetzer, myself. We were all playing for raising money for the Mandela Fund. And I was standing in cell number five that Mr. Mandela was, was imprisoned in, and you were looking out of the window, Ayaz. Mm. And there was a concrete slab outside in the in the prison courtyard. And he was staring at that. And I looked at him and I said, sir. And he said, uh, <laughs> he used to call me Maharaja. He <laughs> said, Maharaja, that, that was our tennis court with a string on our uniforms. We would tie the string together and make the net. Mm. We would also put one sock into another sock into another sock and make a ball. Yeah. And we used to play tennis across that string and the tennis court. And he was the prison tennis champion. Wow, really? And uh, he said to me once that uh, you come from a country with a very large population. And if you can, by example, inspire even one kid to become Mm -hmm. a champion, that is greater than winning Wimbledon. Wow. So that was one thing that uh, never left my mind. Uh, Muhammad Ali in Atlanta in uh, 1996, when uh, I won my Olympic medal, um, not only did he light the torch and he had Parkinson's, so his whole body was trembling while he lit the torch. But after I won the medal, uh, at that point, the president of the uh, International Olympic Committee, uh, Mr. Wan Samaranch, uh, brought uh, Muhammad Ali to meet me in the locker room because it was the first, India's first individual Olympic medal uh, post-independence and things like that. And Mr. Ali made it all the way to the locker room and and, and came to say hello. And uh, I shook his hand and I asked his one hand was so big, it engulfed my whole hand. And I was thinking to myself, thank God I didn't take up boxing <laughs> as a profession. But uh, I recited one of, uh, Ali was one of my greatest. Um, right. the, 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 the rumble in the jungle in Zaire was just uh, one of the greatest uh, brand marketing uh, community uh, building philosophies of, of a champion like Ali. It was just something else. It was more than a boxing match. And not the fact that he actually, uh, the rope-a-dope, where he actually 
loosened out the screws on the four corners so the 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 the, the ropes could actually uh, swing more and more so he could lean back so foreman couldn't uh, couldn't reach him but uh, and not only the fact that uh, foreman got a cut in 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 a in a sparring session before the bout by not only that foreman brought a a a german shepherd to africa which was actually disrespectful and not only all those great uh, metaphors of stories that were were at the rumble in the jungle but the fact that muhammad ali united the world in his brand of of sport and his brand of boxing yes. that he believed in what he did yeah. he was imprisoned for the fact that he didn't want to go to war he threw his medal when i recited that float like a butterfly sting like a bee my name is mr lee and he had a great laugh out of that you know <laughs> oh you told him that uh, yeah and uh, and and he had a great laugh ah, and, and he looked at me and he just looked deep down into me and he said uh, you know there are champions and then there are legends he said always be true to yourself to your dreams and to your character because people can see through all the other fakeness mm. to me that because i had asked him a question that you know he had the whole world in his glove so to say yeah and uh, he not only cashes clay not only uh, converted to muhammad ali you know he met a malcolm x uh, back in, in 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 the day and and uh, that whole philosophy of islam that he had undertaken or his whole uh, belief system in what the world that he wanted to live live in was so prolific yeah that nowadays when you uh, riyad when you ask that first question about where is the character in indian tennis it comes back to what your dreams are it comes back to in the environment that you set it comes back to your philosophy of your family that you're brought up in you know and then i think that uh, in india i would really enjoy um over the next decade creating more champions in india creating quality health creating quality mental health creating quality physical health so that youth in the country we recognize talent nurture talent and then set them on their way in any walk of life 